The Last Voyage of the Demeter is directed by Andre Overdahl, who made Troll Hunter, The Autopsy of Jane Doe, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, all films I really liked. And this film is about a crew sailing to England who find that they're carrying a very dangerous cargo in the form of Dracula himself. The film is supposedly based on a section of Bram Stoker's Dracula that depicts a crew sailing across the ocean, discovering that Dracula has stowed away on their ship. And obviously that is immediately a movie to anyone who ever works on film. That's like, well, of course, that's a movie. Why isn't that a movie yet? Even so, the film has been in development hell for years. The script has been around for a long time. Tons of rewrites, different directors have come on board and left. And now the film is finally coming out. So how is it? Look, I had pretty low expectations going into this movie. It's probably not fair, but usually early August releases, especially late August releases, aren't that great. Hollywood kind of tends to dump a lot of their movies towards the end of the summer that they didn't necessarily want to put in the beginning of spring and into the beginning of summer. There's also kind of a weird vibe that I think any seasoned film lover gets where you just don't hear a lot about a movie and then all of a sudden it's coming out. And just makes you feel like, well, I mean, that must not be that good then because no one's talking about it and they're just going to dump it. But in truth, this movie actually has quite a bit going for it, namely the filmmaker. Andre Overdahl is really great behind the camera and this is, yet again, another massive step up for him production-wise. When you look at something like The Autopsy of Jane Doe, which takes place pretty much entirely in a morgue. Troll Hunter, which is found footage, although it has some pretty impressive visual effects. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, definitely a step up, and this film feels even bigger than that one, so he's obviously climbing the ladder of success very well in Hollywood, and I think he once again has done a great job of directing the movie. It's beautiful looking. If his budget was tight, I certainly didn't feel it. There's quite a bit of water in this movie, a lot of rain and storms, and if anyone's ever worked on a movie, you know that something that seems simple like that is an absolute disaster <laughs> to film with. Water and film sets, not a good combination. But the thing about the movie that I think is most impressive is all of the performances. Corey Hawkins is fantastic in the movie, as is Ashling Franciosi, who you might recognize from The Nightingale, Jennifer Kent's film. She's wonderful here. Liam Cunningham as the ship's captain, incredible performance. But honestly, it was David Dasmalchian who impressed me the most. He's having a phenomenal year being in this, the Boogeyman, and Oppenheimer. The first time I ever saw him, or at least recognized him, was The Dark Knight. He plays one of the Joker's thugs, and he was amazing in that movie. And I remember even after that, I saw him in like a Wendy's commercial, and I was like, wow, he's really out there. Like, he's paying the bills. He's working. And it's just nice to see him do so well this year. I think he's a phenomenal actor, and he's so good in the movie. The movie is also very sad. That is not something I expected. I thought it would be more fun and a little more safe but it's not. It's a very tragic film. This is not a movie you go to to have a laugh. It's actually incredibly dark, and things happen in the movie with characters that I didn't expect that you don't normally see in films of this size. They are often viewed as a risk, and I was very surprised. Also, Corey Hawkins' character is given a surprising amount of depth. He has a great scene in the movie where he talks about how difficult it has been for him, even though he was able to obtain a degree which he describes as one of the hardest things he's ever had to do in the late 1800s. Even after obtaining that degree, no one wanted to hire him. And I found that scene and the placement of that scene really well done. I was not expecting that level of depth for the movie. Liam Cunningham also has a similarly fantastic scene where he's dealing with something that's extremely difficult for him and it's kind of making him lose his mind a little bit. In fact, that's one of the more interesting things about the movie is when the characters get to a point on their voyage where they are starting to get a little kooky and they're thinking things and imagining things and turning on each other a little bit. That aspect of the film is really, really fun. Of course, what I think most people are paying to see though is Dracula. And I think it's probably the weakest part of the movie, unfortunately. There seems to be a combination of visual effects and practical work. I didn't find any of it necessarily bad. I just found that Dracula in the movie lacked personality. He felt more like a primal force and less of someone who was making choices. It just kind of felt like he woke up at night and ate and then went to bed. He smiles a lot in a very evil way. It was a bit cheesy. A choice like this makes sense if you're essentially saying, I'm going to make Alien, but it's with Dracula and it's on a boat on the high seas. 
I understand that pitch, and I think that's actually a really good pitch. And in some ways, it works very well in the film for tension when you're not sure where Dracula is, and you're thinking he could pop out of any corner. But the thing that's primal and effective about the xenomorph is it does not show emotion. It is just a, an entity. It's a creature. It is just surviving, and it's higher on the food chain than you. And it needs you to give birth to more, and it's really scary. So when it comes to Dracula in this movie, to make Dracula primal, but also allow him to show emotions like smiling, almost relishing in a kill, it conflicts with the idea of a primal force because you're also depicting him as having emotion. That to me is sort of a central flaw with the film that I could never quite get past. But if you can overlook something like that, I do think that you're going to find a surprising amount of depth to the characters, more so than I was expecting to in a movie that's essentially about people on a ship being picked off one by one. It's a great production. Everything looks more expensive than I expected it to, which was nice to see on the big screen. So guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. If you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.